The new Borat sequel once again pits Sasha Baron Cohen in character against real Americans with controversial views, and shocking, provocative, and hilarious comedy ensues. Here's everything there is to know about Borat's subsequent movie film. Because Borat's subsequent movie film was made so quickly and under a veil of secrecy, the project's existence was something of a surprise. Amazon announced in September 2020 that the film, which had finished shooting only weeks earlier, would be available for streaming a month later. This belies the fact that a sequel to the original Borat film took years and a few false starts to get off the ground. At a conference in February 2007, Rupert Murdoch, the chief executive of the company that owned Borat distributor 20th Century Fox, announced that Sasha Baron Cohen had signed on to make Borat 2. That project was essentially declared dead in 2007 when Cohen told the Daily Telegraph that he was retiring two of his best-known characters, Ali G and Borat. As Cohen told Variety, When I was being Ali G and Borat, I was in character sometimes 14 hours a day, and I came to love them, so admitting I am never going to play them again is quite a sad thing. Cohen went on to other roles in other things, such as the 2016 action comedy The Brothers Grimsby, which Cohen promoted with an appearance and character as Borat on Jimmy Kimmel Live. It's possible that Cohen jumped at this opportunity to re-enter Borat's world. The way Borat infiltrated the 2020 Republican CPAC conference didn't go down in reality exactly as portrayed in the film. In Borat's subsequent movie film, Borat conceals his unwelcome self under a Ku Klux Klan robe and hood, claiming to be President Trump advisor Stephen Miller. Then Borat safely makes his way to a bathroom where he dons an elaborate disguise to make himself resemble a grotesque caricature of Trump. However, when he emerges in full Trump regalia, he's clearly received a professional makeup job. Cohen told the New York Times that he had to wait in that bathroom for five hours until Pence finally came out on stage. In fact, the Trump disguise was completed before Cohen entered CPAC, and this is what was really hidden under the white robe. Speaking of killing time for the sake of comedy, Cohen really did quarantine in rural Washington state with Trump-supporting conservatives Jerry and Jim. He lived with them for five whole days in the early days of the coronavirus pandemic lockdown, and he even enlisted his two accidental temporary roommates' help in writing the song he'd perform at the March for Our Rights rally as Country Steve. Borat's subsequent movie film obviously features the return of Borat, but the breakout character of the 2020 comedy is Tutar, Borat's heretofore unknown 15-year-old daughter who lives in a barn by his house and becomes the nation's gift to American Vice President Mike Pence. Subsequent movie film marks the Western film debut for 24-year-old Bulgarian actor Maria Bakalova, who prior to portraying Tutar, acted in fewer than a dozen, mostly Bulgarian projects. None of those films are particularly well-known to English-speaking comedy audiences in the US and elsewhere, but subsequent movie film's producers still endeavored to make sure Bakalova's performance was a revelation. Pre-release materials claimed that the actress portraying Tutar was named Irina Novak, an imaginary actress for whom, of course, no acting record existed. In reality, Bakalova studied at Bulgaria's National Academy for Theater and Film Arts and beat out more than 600 other women interested in playing Tutar. Subsequent movie film producers put out an open call and Bakalova sent in a videotape, auditioned in person in London, and Cohen personally selected her to play his daughter. Before she can be gifted to Mike Pence, Tutar undergoes an extensive physical and personality makeover, which includes coming out at a traditional genteel debutante ball in Macon, Georgia. Borat and Tutar claim to be Sandra Jessica Parker Drummond and Professor Philip Drummond III and stir things up with a provocative daddy-daughter dance whose humor relies heavily on menstruation and prodding the fathers of some of the other debutantes to say wildly inappropriate things about young women. Subsequent movie film is presented in a way that viewers would believe Cohen and Bakalova crashed a cotillion, but the production actually created the event. Filmmakers rented out the Hay House in Macon in February 2020, telling venue staff that they were making a coming-of-age documentary and then hired local fathers and daughters $50 each to be extras and take part in what was staged to look like a real debutante ball. However, once the shoot got too risque, Hay House staff reportedly ended filming prematurely and kicked out the whole movie film cast and crew, according to WMAZ. 
Borat's subsequent movie film's debut took the world by surprise, but Sacha Baron Cohen left clues around the United States months before the film hit Amazon. In February 2020, ABC News reported that a Donald Trump impersonator interrupted a speech by Vice President Mike Pence at the Conservative Political Action Conference in Maryland. Security escorted the screaming foe Trump from the premises of the Gaylord National Resort and Convention Center and sought the assistance of the local Prince George's County Police Department, but no criminal charges were filed against the well-disguised interloper. In July 2020, Page Six reported that former New York City Mayor Rudolph Giuliani called police over a Cohen-orchestrated prank interview, and the movie also proved correct rumors started by social media posters who claimed to have seen the Borat character driving while being filmed. Late in Borat's subsequent movie film, the Kazakhstan government orders Borat to present his daughter Tutar to Rudolph Giuliani, former New York City mayor and personal attorney to Donald Trump. Tutar agrees to go meet with Giuliani in a hotel room, posing as a journalist. But Borat cannot let his daughter debase herself, and he crashes the meeting, offering himself in place of Tutar. At the exact moment Cohen busts in, Giuliani, who up to that point has been very handsy and flirtatious with someone he believes to be a journalist, lays prone on a bed with his hands down his pants. Cohen chose that time for his entrance because he grew, quote, quite concerned for Bakalova's safety. You're 15, she's too old for you. Cohen told Good Morning America, it's my responsibility as a producer as well to ensure that the lead actor is looked after. After the scene leaked in October 2020, Giuliani denied any wrongdoing, saying on his radio show, I am tucking my shirt in, I assure you. That's all I was doing. Then the attorney took to Twitter calling the footage, quote, a complete fabrication. Cohen, however, said it's pretty clear what went down. In a brief video as Borat, he mock defended Giuliani, saying that the, quote, fake news media had made something out of an innocent sexy time encounter between a consenting man and my 15-year-old daughter. One of the most affecting moments in Borat's subsequent movie film begins with some of the film's most audacious satire. Borat, proudly anti-Semitic and believing that the Holocaust didn't happen after reading a denialist Facebook page, heads to a synagogue to commit suicide. He has no money to purchase a gun, so he figures he'll just wait for the next American mass shooting. He disguises himself as a grossly offensive, over-the-top stereotypical idea of a Jewish person, but gets called out on his awfulness by Judith Dim Evans, an elderly woman who bravely stands up to Borat and tells him the Holocaust did, in fact, occur, and that she bore witness to it. According to Deadline, Sasha Baron Cohen broke his own filmmaking precedent and let Evans and her companion in on the joke, letting them know that he was making a satirical comedy film and that he himself is Jewish. Subsequent movie film distributor Amazon packaged into its X-ray bonus content the complete telling of Evans' Holocaust story. And when Evans died shortly after filming, the production helped Evans' family create a memorial website. Subsequent movie film is dedicated to her memory. However, Evans' estate later sued the filmmakers, claiming that their late relative was not properly informed of the nature of the film and that she had unwittingly helped, quote, mock the Holocaust and Jewish culture. Borat's subsequent movie film is the second Borat movie, but it made history as the first film made amidst nationwide coronavirus-caused shutdowns. Within 24 hours of production companies being cleared to start making movies again, the necessarily small subsequent movie film team was out on the road gathering footage. While venturing out during a pandemic is dangerous enough, Cohen felt unsafe in other ways. According to Deadline, he had to wear a bulletproof vest on at least two separate occasions, including the day he showed up at a gun rights rally and upset attendees, who tried to drag him out of his exit vehicle. Cohen had a big reason to complete the movie in a timely manner. He wanted it to be released before Election Day 2020. Cohen told the New York Times, We wanted it to be a reminder to women of who they were voting for, or who they're not voting for. Because the coronavirus pandemic led to the widespread closure of movie theaters, Borat filmmakers had little choice but to sign with a streaming service in order to ensure the film reached viewers by mid-October 2020. The winning party, who could guarantee getting it out in time, had a few reservations regarding the film's incendiary political content 
Amazon. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.